Since it last appeared on this channel about a month ago, the Dell Dimension E520 has received some pretty substantial upgrades. I'm gonna go th quickly through them because this computer is about to go to my friend Shoko, who I think I've mentioned her a few times before on this channel. She does animations and video editing and digital art and music composition. And for the past several years, she's been limping along with an older Dell workstation-y thing, that, probably 10 years old. She's got it secondhand, and it's on its last legs. There will be a video on that in the next few days, possibly next weekend. But it's an old Pentium 4 box. It's slow on the best of days, and it's starting to suffer some hardware failure. And this was a good platform for a replacement. When I got this machine, it was running a Pentium D940 at 3.2 GHz. Stock would be a 1.86 GHz Core 2 Duo A6300. However, through the magic of eBay, I acquired a Core 2 Duo E6700 at 2.66 GHz, a substantial improvement. Shoko's old graphics card was so old and so slow that some elements of her animation software did not function correctly. The integrated graphics on this motherboard were fine for light web browsing or word processing, but displayed significant frame tearing whenever a video was played, even when the CPU usage on the Pentium D was nowhere near maximum. I settled on this little NVIDIA GeForce GT620 as a dedicated graphics processor. It's a physically small card, so it does not run into the processor heatsink shroud just off frame here. It's electrically light on the system, only about 30 watts, and compared to the integrated graphics, or Shoko's old card, it is literally two orders of magnitude faster, according to some benchmarks I looked at. While the motherboard does have a full-featured sound card built in, I included Shoko's old PCI sound card as part of the new build. It's a Creative CT4810, and that is also known as the Sound Blaster Viper 128. It has the date of 1999 stamped on it, making it substantially older than the machine it came out of, Shoko's old machine. And thus, she doesn't really know much about its history before it got into her computer. It's difficult to see with some of the cables in the way, but I have installed another two RAM modules, bringing total RAM up to 3 gigabytes of 533 MHz DDR2. The original plan was to install Shoko's old hard drive as the only hard drive in this machine, reinstall Windows, transfer her files, everything. However, when I investigated her old drive, it has over 24,000 hours of operation on it, and thus I trusted a bit less than this machine's original drive, which only has 700 hours of operation. Thus, this machine's original drive, the one on top, remains as the primary drive, 320GB Western Digital. Shoko's old drive, a 500GB Western Digital, has become a secondary drive. The airflow of this machine in stock configuration can be considered mediocre at best, consisting of the 140mm CPU fan as intake, and the 80mm power supply fan as exhaust, with no other fans. However, I made a little bit of a rant in the first video I made about this machine, about how the processor shroud was a bit too large and it didn't fit over the heatsink well and let too much air bypass the heatsink. When I installed a little cardboard air guide to force more air across the fins, it brought about a secondary problem which I then had to deal with. Because the flap prevents any air from leaking around the heatsink, it allows the CPU fan to turn very, very slowly, almost at its idle speed, under most states of processor operation. However, at higher power levels, the fan barely spins up even as the rest of the motherboard components require additional cooling. To solve the air intake problem, I removed the cover on the unoccupied optical drive bay, which also opens up inside the bay for the card reader or floppy drive. This created an air intake channel to which I installed a 12-volt low-power 
very quiet 80 millimeter fan to intake fresh air. I covered the opening with this little screen to prevent large dust particles from getting sucked in. This cardboard flap feeds the air from that fan towards the power supply and down towards the RAM, north bridge, and the rest of the motherboard. I finally added this 92mm fan on the back for exhaust, running it on 5 volts to keep it quiet. This helps pull air out and balances the case pressure, resulting in a neutral pressure case under most circumstances, rising slightly positive if the CPU cooler fan speeds up. Likewise, with the secondary air intake, I installed these bits of window screen in front of the CPU fan and these other little vents which are in front of the hard drives but eventually lead up to this fan. These will keep hair and large particles of dust out of the system and reduce the frequency at which it must be cleaned. The result of all this work is a machine that is quieter and more energy efficient than the one it's replacing while at the same time is many times more powerful. Hopefully it'll be the last time this machine has to be down in my workshop for repairs or upgrades, and it should give several years of reliable service.